Okay. Cool. Hello. So, hi. Hi. Welcome to episode three of Coders Talk. We're here with Jose Lopez. Salutations. Yeah. He is a PHP developer. That is correct. Pip. Pip. You gotta accentuate the H. <laughs> and that's how you pronounce it, right? That is correct. <laughs> I also know some mystical. 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 It's my sequel. Mystical. Mystical. Do you sequelize? I do sequelize. Nice. <laughs> he does sequelize. I do. Um, okay, cool. So um, let's just get started with the first question, unless you have anything else to throw in there. I uh, no, that's all I have to throw <laughs> for right now. Nice. Yes. <laughs> we may see throwing later. <laughs> yes. So how did you get into coding? Wow. So for this story, we have to travel <laughs> far back in time. Uh, so when I graduated from high school, I thought mm -hmm. astrophysics was the way I wanted to go. Oh, that's we, cool. Yeah. So yeah. I did all my community college classes mm -hmm. to major in astrophysics and then I transferred out and That's so cool I took an internship and yeah. I realized I don't really like all the crazy physics and mathematics that's involved in astrophysics. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I realized during my internship the thing I really liked the most was uh, just working on the computer and mm -hmm. being able to transform that data into something us people can actually oh. understand. Is there, so is there coding in astrophysics? Oh yeah, I think. Really? Yeah, I think a what? large part of astrophysics is actually doing programming oh. and figuring out like all your mathematical calculations so they mm -hmm. correlate with uh, your simulations. Oh wow, I actually didn't know that. And then what was your goal with that? Um, Did you, well, if you had any clear set goals with that, like to work for like NASA or? I actually wanted to become a, just like a researcher at a university. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Which is yeah. still a dream I, I have, yeah. but that's like a goal further down yeah. the line. And you've talked about that before. So we worked together um, previously and I was a project manager and he was a web developer yes. and he brought up his education a lot. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today and the different route that he took. We've spoken to people uh, to someone who is self-taught, and we've spoken to someone who also had an engineering degree and then taught themselves coding outside of that degree. So you take you took a different path. Yes, I did. Yeah. Education. Um, <laughs> so it was very interesting. Uh, so in a school scenario, you're taught a lot about theory, mm -hmm. and all your core classes are just centered around theory and even your programming assignments are like, hey, mm -hmm. make this run faster or optimize this storage. But you yeah. don't really actually do like, you know, build an app. Uh, you have to take elective courses for that. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you don't take those elective courses or the right elective courses, you're kind yeah. of like when you hit, if you hit the job market, if that's your goal after yeah. college, then you're kind of at a disadvantage. Oh, okay. Okay. And I feel like part of what helped me out was I took uh, three different elective classes that were like build an app or <laughs> build yeah. data visualizations and th yeah. Yeah, and you did end up building an app, right? And it w was it an Android app. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Actually, both an Android and an iOS app. Oh, cool. And they would uh, track buses around campus. Oh my god. And yeah, because one of the biggest things about uh, so I went to Santa Cruz yeah. and. The campus is like literally on a hill. So, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. And built inside a forest. What? Yeah. That's so cool. So if you're trying to go from like point A to point B, it's yeah. like not a straight shot. You have to take a short hike. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. Those trees get out of the way. <laughs> Damn trees. <laughs> yeah. And you'd show up to class just like covered in sweat. So if you oh, wanted to avoid man. that, you'd just take one of the loop buses. But the problem okay. was if they only come like every five to 10 minutes. So you have to sync it perfectly. Exactly. Oh, and wow. if you miss, like, the window, then yeah. you're like, whoa. You're late or you're sweaty. Or yeah. both. <laughs> Which is always my case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So especially during finals, that is something you did not want to. Oh, yeah. With, so. yeah. You can't risk that. 
No, not at all. Um, so yeah, a couple of class or a couple of classmates of mine, we got together mm-hmm. and uh, chose that as our senior project, and we oh, collaborated wow. with the computer engineering students. That's it, so cool. Yeah, they actually put little Raspberry Pis on the buses. Oh my god! Yeah. They got to, like, mount hardware? That's yeah. nutty. And on the bus stops, too. So, oh, really? Uh, you had one bus stop and the other one, and it'll, as the bus was coming through, it'll the bus would check in, like, hey, you just oh, stopped at this stop, and this is the estimated time for the wow. next one. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised that they didn't already have that infrastructure there. Yeah, so we thought, you know, this was a project someone had already mm-hmm. kind of put in place, but it wasn't and we were both pleasantly surprised and happy because you know it gave us a senior project to that's do. so cool yeah, yeah. And, and go ahead oh i was just gonna say no one messed with the raspberry pies uh they were up in the front where the bus driver oh, is usually at inside so. the bus oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah okay i was like you just like slapped it on the side of the bus <laughs> God. no then we'd have to worry about the raccoons stealing it oh there were raccoons there are so many raccoons on the what? campus i do not like raccoons <laughs> because of they stole one of my burritos oh when my i was God. having a very great day and <laughs> This raccoon just comes up and just takes my whole burrito and runs off what with it. What a jerk. I know. <laughs> that was my lunch. Okay, cool. So let's talk a little bit more about your computer science degree. So you were uh, talking about how it's more like theory-based, but did you learn any like low-level languages as well? Yes. So one okay. of the requirements for graduating was a computer systems class. Mm-hmm. And naively enough, I thought we were going to be building computers, <laughs> and building boy, computers? was I wrong. <laughs> so you kind of learn about, like, the insides of a computer, the switches, okay. and how logic works. Yeah. And in that, you learn we learned the uh, assembly language, which is, mm. like, a level below what C is. Okay, yeah. And then we learned C as well, and okay. part of our core classes required that we knew what C, or how C works. How C works. How to implement it and it's a lot of fun <laughs> it makes you think about like the whole process like yeah just from start to beginning and when your program terminates how do you handle mm-hmm. all that extra memory that's still there oh that's so interesting because when you're learning high level languages you're not really dealing with those things right yeah. exactly so it, it makes you think um you know you go from playing checkers to playing yeah. chess where you really have to think about the whole board and what this piece does yeah. and that piece and, and you, allocating it properly oh yeah, yeah. And that, that's why I like high level languages much much more because much i can easier. just plug and go yeah and does okay so when you're working with high level languages does it handle the memory for you uh, most of the times it does there are okay. instances where you can just have like a memory leak somewhere Oh, really? But I think debugging oh. it in high-level languages, it's a little bit more easy. Oh, hear. okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I still don't know how to find those in <laughs> low-level languages. <laughs> the leaks? The leaks. <laughs> so don't leave me in charge of the Titanic. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. Please. Jock? Uh, Jock. Jock? <laughs> um, okay, a big thing I want to ask you. So... You know, we're, we're finishing, at my coding boot camp, we're all kind of finishing up our curriculum. It's winding down. We're, we're, you know, getting into React. We're finishing up. And a lot of us don't have computer science degrees. You have a computer science degree. Do you think you have, like, a leg up in the job market? Ooh, um, not really. Um... I think mm-hmm. a lot of what recruiters are looking for nowadays are experience. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you have experience in the classroom. That's all fine and dandy. But what about like outside the class? Like, real do you have world. Yeah, yeah, real world yeah. Um, uh, where it's less structured, where okay. it's more, hey, can I do, I want to do this. How do yeah. I do it? So a lot of times personal projects really, really. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is that how you were able to get your first job in the industry like just displaying your 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 work basically absolutely okay. um i think a lot of my interviews when i first got out of college it wasn't really about like oh you have class a b c and d yeah. that's awesome <laughs> like 
do 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 yeah. algorithms, they would look at the projects and be like, whoa, uh, this is pretty mm. cool. And then we'd talk about, you know, project A for 10 minutes, project mm-hmm. B for another 10 minutes. And it okay. just lets them know like, hey, this guy, you know, has... Has knows some what knows what he's doing to some extent. <laughs> just a, well, we'll give him some credit. <laughs> it's not just a piece of paper in his hand. <laughs> and did you have to kind of walk them through your process, or did they have you explain why you designed it a certain way? It was just um, give them give them a high view of. Mm. It was like, what's the problem? How do you find a solution to that oh, problem? Okay. Why do you use this technology and not yeah. technology B? Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. And then, okay, so um, you you work with PHP. Did you teach yourself PHP once you got out of college? Yes. So I taught okay. my, while well, I was in this weird nexus between having graduated <laughs> and getting my first job, it mm-hmm. was, uh, I just couldn't stay still. Like, I had yeah. to do something. So yeah. I learned uh, PHP, nice. uh, MySQL as well. Mystical? Mystical. <laughs> Mystical and <laughs> HTML. HTML? What is HTML. That? Oh. <laughs> Wait, you didn't know HTML when you were getting your CS degree? No. Um, <laughs> what? Yeah, so computer science is literally just like... That is nutty. The science of how of computers... Computer. Yeah. <laughs> so assembly and C is what you learn. Algorithms, yeah. runtime... Uh, Big O? Big O. Okay, little cool. Little O. <laughs> Big Wait, there's, is there a little O? Are you messing uh, with no, me? No, there, there's... Oh, okay. I thought little you were Little O notation versus Big O notation. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Big O. Big O and little Big O algorithms. <laughs> and data structures and all that. Oh, cool. Which is, yeah. Yeah, and you, you kind of alluded to earlier the fact that you really like academics and maybe you'd want to go back into like data analysis absolutely yeah Um, one of my favorite things in the world is taking like this giant block of just numbers and Mm. figures and being able to like make it into something comprehensible like i very cool i can't look at numbers and be like oh yeah that means like back in 1968 this was (laughs) happening no i have to see like a visual learner yeah cool and is that um so can you like run me through like data analysis like kind of an overview because i'm not very familiar with it absolutely so in the data analysis data science uh, Mm -hmm. realms you start by scraping your data gathering your data polishing up your data so going you know using i think the big one right now is python some people still use r okay yeah Uh, they go through the data set they clean it up like oh i don't want this column i want this column Mm -hmm. don't you know uh add headers to my information so we can know what the heck's going on yeah and then finally you plot the data you do whatever mm. uh you know create fancy looking graphs uh, oh, okay. and then from there you know you can start building assessments out of it like oh there's a correlation between this yeah. and that and being able to yeah just see patterns in society or yeah. maybe go into like sociology sociology yeah. exactly tons of fields yeah. Well, I'm thinking now there's a huge blow up of data analysis, like in social media, in right. finance, there's so many, like every industry needs data analysis. Yeah. I mean, we're at a point in uh, our history where mm-hmm. we have so much data about everyone yeah. because of, you know, cell phones and yeah. our we're computer use. You. <laughs> Big brothers always watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah. There's a lot of data out there and yeah. not a lot of people looking at it and being able mm-hmm. to, you know, my big thing is make society better with tools we oh, have. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Finding, like, a, like reducing down that data to human understandable yes. like uh, things that you can do with that data. Actionable items. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about the transition between academics to work. All right. Yeah. Okay, so it, it was a very interesting transition, to say the least. Uh, at school, there was kind of a more structured mm-hmm. balance. I know I, I know, out of job, you're kind of like eight to five, but yeah. what happens between those hours, it's like completely different. Like at school, you know, you, you knew you had homework assignments to do, mm-hmm. you know, you had tests on certain days, you know, you had to study for finals or midterms mm-hmm. or whatever. <clears throat> and 
you kind of got used to that routine because yeah. you know you've been doing it since you're in kinder mm -hmm. and then you get to the workforce and you're like wow it's eight to five but i don't know what i'm going to be doing on the given day like yeah <clears throat> Uh, who do I ask questions? Do I raise my hand to go to the bathroom? <laughs> what's uh, what's the deal here? Yeah. So uh, it was definitely a tough transition for me at first mm -hmm. uh, because I've never done something from like eight to five just oh really go going straight. Yeah. I, I mean, when I was doing homework, you know, I'd have all nighters, but mm -hmm. I'd you know have like little times in between to take a break, to get some rest, take a nap if I needed to. Yeah. And yeah, at work it's just uh, eight hours straight, five yeah. days a week. <clears throat> uh, definitely, the skills that I had to implement at work were different. Where mm -hmm. at school you don't really have to interact much with people. Um, you know, you can be a complete hermit and mm -hmm. only talk to people when you really need to. Yeah. Or yeah, where at in the workforce, I you have to ask questions. I mean, that's the mm -hmm. only way to learn is you ask questions, you ask for clarifications on certain tasks. Yeah. And yeah, so that was a fun transition. Uh, definitely once I got more experience in the workforce, I definitely mm -hmm. prefer, you know, an eight to five then, uh, eight to five Monday through Friday, then a school day where it's just like, you get to do homework all the time, <laughs> every day, even on Sundays. So. Yeah. It's definitely much... Yeah, because it's, like, restricted, and you know I'm going to be working 40 hours a week this week. Right. Yeah. Right. But, um, so you were, I mean, we were kind of talking about a little bit about, well, we, we worked at the same place, and it wasn't a positive work environment. Right. How did you, how did you, like, pull yourself, like, out of there? Like, how were you able to, like, mentally go from such a toxic work environment to like a, a good work environment that you're in now. Okay, uh, so yeah, when the when I transitioned from being in college to mm -hmm. the workforce, and I thought that's how the workforce was supposed to be as a programmer. Like you just get oh. thrown into the fire, and mm -hmm. you you know you learn as you go, and your supervisor's just there to you know check in and solve issues. Uh, I did not have a lot of support if it weren't for my like fellow colleagues. Yeah. I probably would not have learned and not have lasted more than like three months there mm -hmm. um so yeah I, I had like a lot of issues working there and trying to stay afloat and it just became very stressful mm -hmm. to go in every day yeah trying to figure out like what am I going to do and how am I going to do it yeah because I have no real sense of direction no real yeah. way to break down the problems here mm -hmm. um so I started getting like really stressed out and a lot of it was leaking to my personal life oh man yeah so I know that. Yeah. yeah so a lot of times you know it was just like having arguments with my significant other yeah. about just dumb little things that, yeah that don't even matter yeah, yeah exactly so there there was one day where i was just uh you know we had a small little argument and mm -hmm. I, I was just sitting there and i was thinking whoa like that is not right like yeah. i shouldn't th this shouldn't be something that's like even should be an issue. It should be yeah. a simple, hey, you know, this happened and we should yeah. solve it this way. So I kind of realized that, hey, you know, this, this is toxic for me. I cannot keep doing this for my own personal health, for the mm -hmm. well-being of my relationships outside of work. So, um, yeah, I decided, I sat down and I was thinking about like, oh, wow, these all should have been red flags. Like every time I came to my supervisor with a problem, instead of him dealing with it in mm -hmm. a constructive manner. It was always a, you're dumb, I'm holier, holier than thou mm -hmm. uh, manner. And that's just not yeah. good, not a good way to learn and not a good way, especially for someone who's in their first position to. Yeah, and it's not productive at all because it's, you're try when you're trying to get a job done, you're not trying to be told like everything that you're doing wrong. Right. You're just trying to find a solution. Exactly, you yeah. know, and there should be a balance, like, hey, you know, you did this incorrectly, but... Here's how here, to turn it around. Here's how maybe. to turn it around, yeah. or here's what you could have done better, but I like how you did this. Sure, So some yeah. sort of, like, positive feedback in there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, you know, I found a different job, and it was kind of strange getting into a position where you're treated with some sort of respect. Yeah, for, yeah. 
as opposed to somewhere where you were just treated indifferently. Mm -hmm. Like, even in my new position, even when I've made, uh, when I've had hiccups in my mm -hmm. work, uh, my supervisor's always been, like, super cool about it and mm -hmm. is always like, hey, you know, you should remember to do this next time you're presenting yeah. with such a problem. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. yeah. And uh, while I did learn a lot in my first job, I feel mm -hmm. like within the same time span in my second job, because of the kind of supervisor I have, mm -hmm. I've learned so much more. Oh, like, really? Like, oh, that's so much incredible. More. Yeah. Okay, I'm really glad. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I know that, um, yes, people, I think, do a lot better when they're encouraged. It sounds like kind of ridiculous to say, but when you go out into the real world, you kind of need a little bit more leeway and a little more encouragement. Yeah, it's like doing a sport. Like, if mm -hmm. you're trying out, you know, if you're trying to play soccer for the first time and someone's mm -hmm. just like, oh, you don't know how to kick the ball, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Disappointing and laughing and not telling you, hey, maybe instead of kicking it with your knee, you should try kicking <laughs> it with your foot. Kick it with your <laughs> knee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I, always, I love sports analogies. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's a great analogy. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, you know, having the right coach and to yeah. coach you well and, Especially people who, like, are coming out of college or coming out of school mm -hmm. or, or this is their first job. You want to make sure you you leave them with a good first impression because we do have a shortage of, you know, software developers, web developers. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. They're still doing it. doesn't seem like... There are so many, like, um, job postings. Yeah, there's... But... Yeah, but a lot of them take a while to yeah. fill up. Oh, okay. Um, and also finding quality developers. Yeah, um, yeah. And it goes back to that. Like, if you don't train them, if you don't give them the proper training, the proper feedback, mm -hmm. then how do you expect them to get better? How do, you, how do they learn? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, if you teach good practices, mm -hmm. they'll end up teaching good practices. Yeah. And you just get this nice circular flow. Nice. And, <laughs> yeah. A loop of feedback. A yeah. feedback of good developers. <laughs> So we were talking a little bit earlier about um, the, like women in computer science, and I was telling you about how at my boot camp, I think we have seven women out of like 30 students, which is a pretty decent ratio. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then you were saying in your computer science department, it was a lot less. Yeah. So we'd be in like these big old lecture halls that, you know, hold 100, 200 people, mm -hmm. and you'd see like five women in there and then you'd go to your you know your labs or your other classes mm -hmm. and it'd be the same five women and then some of those were like computer engineering so not all of them were actual cs so oh. like the five or seven of them you know maybe three of those were actually cs but the other two could have been some sort of engineering yeah but it's you know starting the trend is starting to point it's going up it's yeah. going up and that's <laughs> awesome because we need yeah. you know just diverse set of ideas and diverse totally. way of looking at problems. Yeah, totally yeah. agree. Did you, did you ever get to like ask them about like their experience at all, or did you talk to them? Um, some of them, uh, I actually became pretty close friends with a couple mm -hmm. of them, and oh, cool. um, a lot of it was like overcoming a lot of nervousness. Oh, really? You know. Um, They want to not feel like they're being treated differently yeah. or, you know, don't want to feel like they're asking them questions. I mean, like, mm -hmm. I was a minority in the CS program as well, and yeah. you know, I could relate to some of the questions. Like, well, you know, is this a dumb question to ask? I'm yeah. not saying anyone <laughs> else ask it. And yeah. Trying to overcome that. Totally. Almost, like, imposter syndrome. In a yeah. Way. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. I, I'm kind of like that in class, too, because... Um, men tend to be very open and free with advice giving, even if they don't know as much as me. Right. So I've kind of stopped participating in class because I was getting a lot of that type of feedback from my classmates. Yeah. So that was a thing. Yeah, and a lot of times people talk so sure about themselves, mm -hmm. especially I feel like in CS, and you're like, whoa, this guy seems yeah. to know a lot, but I don't really, yeah, know, I don't really know. Exactly, so. yeah. Do you think that um, the other men in the classes you were in noticed that there were not that many women? 
Uh, I believe a handful of them might have. Mm, okay. um, other times I feel like so many of us just kind of became used to how this was that we were like, oh, eh, you know, yeah. kind of indifferent towards it, which isn't, you know. Yeah, it's kind of a norm. Kind of a norm, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, it's moving away from that, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Stanford has a 50-50 ratio now, yeah. which I think is awesome. 